Are on Kakan for Ghani Adams says our curse politicians frustrating the Yoruba agenda and the National Assembly informs us of a wave of attacks threatening Nigeria's existence. Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mariana Khan. Are Onakakanfo of Yoruba land, Ghani Adams, has vowed to curse politicians frustrating the Yoruba agenda. He alleged that prominent politicians in the southwest have hijacked the struggle for the actualization of the Yoruba nation. Are Adams said the struggle for Odua Republic is a legitimate one and it's a right of all Yoruba people. Speaking uh, at the weekly Odua People's Congress OPC stakeholders meeting held at the Odua House in Ikeja, Lagos, he accused some prominent politicians who he described as traitors to the Yoruba cause for true liberation. Joining me to discuss this is Femi Lawson and Nelson Ekujimi, both political analysts. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. All right. Great. I'm going to start with you, um, Mr. Femi Lawson. Do you have any idea what the Yoruba agenda is? And if you do, please explain to us. Well, the yeah. European nation agenda, which uh, has been termed as a secession call by so many, whether you like it or not, is a legitimate ag agitation, which is a direct you know, product of the refuser of the Nigerian states as presently constituted you know, to, to listen to our citizens. Now, year in, year out, patriotic Nigerians, nationalists, statesmen, and even the ordinary citizens have continued to demand that we restructure this country onto the path of true federalism. But because the operatives of the Nigerian state have continued to enjoy you know, the dividends of what is called democracy as imposed on us by the military constitution of 1999. They have refused to yield to the demand of those calling for restructuring. And that is what today has given birth to the call for a Yoruba nation. Not only that, for you know, agitations like for, you know, the creation of a Biafran state and some other emerging, you know, call that are in like mind. I think we must also respect the fact that the right to self-determination is an internationally you know, recognized right of the people under the UN, UN Charter. But as much as some of us do not believe that it is proper for us to you know, dismember the union called Nigeria, I think rather than criticizing those calling for the old world nation, we should rather look at those issues that have necessitated this call. Hmm. Interesting. Um, in 2003, I'd just like to do some history with you. Um, there was a Human Rights Watch report titled OPC, a continuing threat to security, and it was a 58-page report, if I remember clearly, um, and it was subtitled Fighting Violence with Violence, and of course, in parentheses, OPC. Um, it provided detailed accounts of killings and um, abuses of human rights by members of the OPC at the time, in fact, since um, the... Um, coming to power of President uh, Ulusha Gwon Basanjo at the time. Um, and now we're talking about something that's similar to it. So I'm wondering, all of this was done in the name of self-determination. Could this be a revival of that same OPC that the Human Rights Watch was talking about? No. You see, what we have today is very, very unusual. It is more sophisticated and it is not in any way comparable to the agitations of the old Draft People's Congress as it were, you know, during the Obasanjo era. 
Today, we have a call for cessation that is not just led by a single organization like OPC was doing, but now by a coalition of you know, very, you know, coalition of different groups of Yoruba origin. Today we have people like a professional of international history, Professor Banja Kitoye, you know, somebody who was a senator during the Second Republic, you know, being part and leading one of the groups demanding for secession from Nigeria. That's the Lano Odua. So people should not narrow this call to what was obtainable then. Today we have the likes of Sunday Go leading, you know, some fronts. We have like the likes of some Yoruba young groups. Today we have diaspora organizations, you know, owned by educated, well-connected Nigerians, you know, funding the agitation for this, you know, Yoruba nation. I think we have all seen this all over the social media you know, and the conventional media. Our Nigerians in diaspora are mobilizing for some support for this call. Only this morning we were reading in the media how the IPOB have just engaged you know, a publicity firm to the tune of about 300 million naira to propagate its agenda. So this cannot be compared to those days, you know, as reported by the International Human Rights. You no know, commission and you know the the government of Nigeria as okay. to why people were calling for secession. Okay. This is an unusual moment. This is a product of extreme frustration on the part of Nigerians, and I think the government must take this more seriously than it has ever done. Let me go to um, Mr. Kujimi. Uh, I want to find out. Do you agree with this stand? Do you support it? Do you think this is the solution to, to Nigeria's problems today? Yes, thank you very much. I'm very happy that on this program this evening, you have two men of Yoruba extraction. You talked about the Yoruba agenda, which uh, my colleague at the other end you know, spoke extensively about. And as a Yoruba man, I must tell you very clearly, that this agenda is unknown to millions of Yoruba persons. This is a political agenda being nurtured by a particular group of persons who have been politically displaced by the, by the political system since 2015. And they have sworn that they will make the country ungovernable for, Niger for the Nigerian government and its people. So when people come out to mount, you know, secession or what they have view, uh, it's a reflection of their political interest. A lot of us have asked, where and when did the Yoruba sit down in an assembly and, you know, confer the rights on these persons or group to agitate on a course of action with regards to their political destiny? Never. It never happened. Okay, so can, when this can, person can I ask you a question? Believe, I'm so sorry. Can I ask you a question? I hate doing this, but let me just ask you a question because you say at no time have the Yoruba nation or the Yoruba people sat down to converge and talk about or mandate these people to do what they, they say they're doing. But then has the Yoruba people or have they come together to also speak against what's happening now? Have the Obas, the Onis, have they said anything about this movement at any point in time, even now that it's brewing again? Because it's not okay for you to just say that, you know, the Yoruba people don't support it, but have they also come out to voice their, um, let's say, disregard for this group or the fact that they do not agree with what they're going on with? Well, I think you, I think you must recognize the fact that the Obas are religious institutions that should be apolitical. I think their, 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 their silence on it could be as a result of the fact that they don't want to delve into the politics of the matter, which they are very much aware of. But if the name of the Yoruba like, nation is being dragged Leon. into this propaganda, which you are implying, or a group of people who are trying to make the nation un ungovernable, then should the people who are leaders of this group not be speaking up against it, if it is something that they do not well, subscribe well, to? Well, I think you must recognize the fact that we, re we, re we operate a constitutional democracy in which we have elected representatives, elected political institutions, and the political institutions are speaking up. 
If the traditional institutions have not spoken about people clamoring for secession, it's because they recognize that people have a right to voice their feelings. And also, you must recognize that in a democracy, while the majority will have their way, the minority must have their say. These are the minority who are agitating. So it's within their rights. While we concede to them the right to agitate for where, wherever they want to go, we also have those of us who have not, you know, uh, come out to condemn them, recognize their right, but their right does not, uh, you know, uh, give them the authority to clamor on behalf of millions of Yoruba persons who are not members of their political party or their political interest, who believe that the problems confronting Nigeria is a problem that we all have to sit down together without political or religious uh, inclinations and, you know, find a collective solution to it. So if those persons believe that the only way to, you know, to um, join the people to follow their line of action is to call for secession that, oh, we are fighting for the Yoruba nation. I can tell you for free. I'm a Yoruba person. These persons are never fighting the interests of the Yoruba people. They are fighting for their own political interests. And we must recognize that that is a right which they have. And also, we also that are not in the same boat with them, also have a right to tell them very clearly that, look, yes, Nigeria is, in, like Nigeria is presently going through some tough times. But we say tough times don't last, but tough people do. Okay. I did remind um, Mr. Lawson about the fact that something similar um, brewed uh, from 1999. And in 2003, uh, the Human Rights Watch wrote a 58-page report about it. Now, uh, and I did ask him if this was not a revival of that. But, th but again, my question to you, it's similar to what I asked him. Is, is, what's the guarantee that what happened on the President of Basanjo will not rear its ugly head again? Because now you have said that if the traditional and the religious institutions in that region do not speak up, there are elected officials. The elected officials obviously are saying, oh, let's come together, let's ask for, re let's, let's fight for restructuring, even though we don't see them really making moves to, for restructuring. But if the, the government keeps quiet and just pays no attention, and this becomes what it was in 2003 and in 1999, shouldn't we be trying to nip it in the bud now instead of just keeping quiet because everybody has rights. But then there is a saying that where one man's rights, uh, you know, um, stops, another man's begins. So how do we deal with that? Well, we, like I said earlier, on, we, op we operate a constitutional democracy in which where your rights stops is where mine begins. The, the laws are very, very clear. In agitating for your rights, it does not give you the right, you know, to trample on mine. So if this person's go into that same mode of 1999 to 2003 that warranted the then uh, president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you know, to read the riot act and order the, 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 the police to shoot at sight. I'm sure you know that law still exists, that if people are a threat to the life of the, to, to national security, the security agencies know the right thing to do. And that is also what we are saying, that look, in as much as you have your rights, don't allow your right to push you to the level that you want to infringe on my own rights. And the state is very much aware that the responsibility of the state is to maintain law and order. So long as these agitators are not undermining national security, oh, well, I'm good. but the moment they, 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 they turn in that direction, I'm sure the state has the responsibility to rein them in. And that is what every uh, peace-loving Nigerian, you know, is demanding. That, look, this person's if their acts constitute a threat to national security, the state must do the needful. The state must not treat them with kiss gloves because, you know, the law is no respecter of anybody. Okay. Let me go back to you, Mr. Lawson, because this seems to be a direct attack on what you believe in and what you stand for. So um, what's your take on what he has said? Because he's saying that he's a Yoruba person. He does not know when and where the Yoruba nation um, you know, elected those people and the people that you support to speak for the Yoruba nation. And of course, as much as you have a right to ask for uh, secession, or rather, um, you know, in, and to ask for rights as an indigenous um, people, uh, you also have to be certain that this is what the whole Yoruba nation is asking for. You, what... see, the, you see, the problem we have that has led us to this kind of agitations, like I said, Third initially, you know, is the you know the inability of the operatives of the Nigerian state to always 
say the truth, abide by the realities, and feel the pulse of the people. And sometimes you don't just blame those operatives of government. You must also blame their supporters, you know, like uh, my colleague, Nelson, who we always justify sometimes things that are not justifiable, that emboldens the Nigerian state not to do the right thing. To start with, the constitutional democracy, the constitution he has continued to refer to, at what point did you and I, or our representative, seek to make that constitution? It was assumed to have been you know, a popular opinion of a group of people. And that is why today we have a constitution that is one of the worst in the world, called the Nigerian 1999 constitution, upon which this government and previous successive government has continued to operate and suppress the will of Nigerians. There is no independence, no democracy. Are there no better Please. ways, Mr. Lawson, to no, wait. get the Please. government to, to engage the government? Because you're saying that no, the reason no, why you're having Please. this is because no. government officials and the leaders leadership of this country have refused to hearken to the yearnings the, of the, the people. Are there no better not, ways than threats believe. for secession? This government, this government in particular does not believe that anything exists as a people. And that is the truth. This is one of the only countries in the world where the opinion or the opinions of the citizens matters not. Let me tell you something. I am telling you that what we are experiencing as the agitation for the Yoruba nation today, whether you call it unpopular or not, whether you say we the Yoruba people have not met to make this demand or not, has become an issue of prominence. Only a few days ago, leaders of the governing ruling party in the Southwest, the APC, met on this same issue of this call for secession. I'm telling you that a few days ago, the entire capital city of Ondo State Akure was on a lockdown for five hours because of the rally organized by these people calling for you know, the Yoruba nation. So we cannot continue to trivialize these kind of issues and begin to make an attempt to see it as an agitator. And let me also emphasize this. The attempt to call those agitation for Yoruba nation as people who lost out in previous elections is mischievous. The truth is that a lot of those people were not active politicians. They were not even politically aligned in the previous elections. But today, the realities of how the 1999 constitution and the incumbent regime have failed have continued to increase this kind of agitations. And we cannot just begin to wish this away like a mere agitation of people within a political interest group. Okay. I think it is unfair and that is, it is not true. I'm going to come back to you with more questions, but we'll take a quick break. You're still watching Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa right after the break. More conversation on the Yoruba Nation. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. It's still Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. And we're still talking about the Are Onokankafo. He is the... Um, leader of the uh, Odua People's Congress in Nigeria. And he has been speaking tough about those who are against the Yoruba nation. He's calling them traitors and that he will curse them. But well, joining us to have this conversation have been um, Nelson Ekujimi and Femi Lawson. Thank you, gentlemen, once again for being back uh, with us. Um, now, Fe Femi, I, I, I want to ask a question before I go back to uh, Kujimi, because you have continuously said that government is not listening. Government is not listening. They don't consider, they do not value our opinion. But is self-determination the answer to our problems? You see, it is, I am not even an advocate of self-determination as of now. But the first thing we must understand, self-determination is a right. It is entrenched in the UN Charter. <laughs> and people who have rights at whatever time they so wish, to say, no, we no longer want to be part of this marriage. Even marriages that are constituted, you know, presumably by God, in the holy, in the holy books 
are subject to divorce. So why should we think, you know, an ordinary man, uh, marriage made by some colonialists are indissoluble? It is wrong. But I want to insist that what has prompted what we are seeing as the call for secession today is the inability of the government and those operators of government, their sympathizers, their supporters, to agree with the fact that the system is not working as it should be. And as long as we continue to have a faulty system and uh, unproductive governance and, you know, unproductive constitution, like Nigeria is currently operating, we we'll continue to have more agitation for secession or even worse agitation if care is not taken. And that is why I don't want to believe these calls are illegal or are wrong. They are legitimate calls, they are legitimate demands occasioned by the refusal of the Nigerian state to do the right thing. And that is it. Mr. Kujimi, um, we talk about unity peace, nation building. I mean, Nigeria is at a point in its um, life where we are facing all sorts. And I always make, uh, you know, I always make the analogy of the fact that if you, you were to spin your pen around the Nigerian flag or the Nigerian map, rather, anywhere that pen points to, there is some form of insecurity or agitation. And, and but then our, our leaders keep saying, oh, we need to come together. We need to unite. Uh, I mean, why can't we just, as a people, if our leaders are not listening, why do we, as the people, not show a united front instead of calling for secession? I mean, if, if the people are united, the, uh, the leadership is not as much as the people. If the people show a united front, then the leadership doesn't have a choice but to do what we say. Well, wouldn't that work instead of us asking for secession? I'm imagining if every region in the country decides that we want to you know, go our different or separate ways. What, the, what then will be left of the country we call Nigeria? Well, I have thought so earlier on that this situation is a product of a few things to the, the right thing for the generation. The class of people represent the it's very difficult for us to hear you, um, Mr. Ekujimi. It's, it's very difficult to hear you. I don't know if it's where you are. Can you move a little bit away from where you are? The connection is okay, really I've poor. Just, I've, just, I've just moved away. All right, good. We can hear you now. I said this agitation is the product of just a few group of persons. And like you all, we all know people cannot sleep. In one, in, we all cannot sleep and think in one direction. The most diversity is the variety of life, or variety is the spice of life. So if these persons are, dis, are dissatisfied with the status quo, a lot of Nigerians are also. But they are determined that, look, this is a problem that must be confronted, and not a situation whereby we use a problem which is part of human existence you know, to cause civil strife. To, you cannot say because you are dissatisfied with a marriage that the most appropriate thing for you is to take to the streets. When there's a, when there's a problem in the marriage, the husband or the wife, it is expected in any society that they'll come together and think about what are the problems, how do we resolve it? And if they're unable to resolve it, then people who ask, Elderly to them in the institutions of marriage, we come counseling. It is only when that is unable to achieve the resolution that you know the marriage could go otherwise. We are saying here clearly that these agitators for secession that they don't represent the generality of the people. They represent their own interests. This is all about politics. Get it very clear. I'm a Yoruba man. I have never been consulted in any way by the Yoruba agenda. And I'm asking, what is even the meaning of the Yoruba agenda? And even if, we have, if you have the Yoruba agenda, I don't believe in it. So it should not be somebody trying to blackmail or intimidate me by saying he's going to cost. If he's going to cost, he's not going to cost me because he's not my maker. 
is because we have no effect. So what we are saying clearly is that in as much as they have a right to agitate, they should please do it within the confines of the law. They don't represent us. They represent wherever they belong to or wherever they are coming from. The society is made up of multiplicity of persons with different interests. So these agitators should keep within the law. And the law is very clear. If they go the route that undermines national security, like I said, to let them in. Okay. As a citizen of that, I have a right to live or to do my business anywhere I want, so long as I've not violated the law. So right. these persons in agitating within their rights must also be reminded that this is a country that is governed by laws. You can't say because you are grieved. You, I heard my other colleague there saying that the supporters, for his information, supporters of the government don't have any mandate in governance. Okay. And finally, Everybody is run by, by law. Okay, finally, Mr. Lawson, what's your take before we wrap up? I mean, because um, your, your colleague here is saying if you must do what you must do, um, you must consult with the people. And he's saying the people are not on your side. And even if you have a, a case here, he thinks that it is purely political. What's the way forward? Have you engaged the government? Have you gone to the National Assembly? Have you spoken to your representatives? Um, have you gotten feedback? Because I'm still trying to understand how this will help the leaders to listen to you uh, as opposed to sending soldiers or the policemen after you. The Nigerian government know the writing. And for those who are emboldening the Nigerian government to continually do the wrong thing, we do only hope that they will be bold enough to advise this government to come for a referendum, if it can, to actually determine which position is popular. Let us ask this government and its supporters to conduct a referendum in the Southeast today, or the Southwest, and see if the people would actually say no to secession. And that is why some of us have continued to advise that the government, you know, engage with the people. All right. You cannot, you know, continually assume that people have to be silent or they don't have right to say whatever they so wish. Okay. If the government DAE or its supporter organize a referendum to test its popularity, I can tell you that the government will fail both to the southeast and the south -west. As far as this call for secession is concerned, okay. I'm not an advocate of secession. Well, we must restructure this country. But you, so but you sound very optimistic that. But then, yes. as much as as much as you're saying in one breath that you are not advocating for it, you also really sound very optimistic that that is what you want for your people. It, but anyway, we don't. To, we're out of time, yes. unfortunately, Mr. Lawson. So we have to go. Uh, Femi Lawson, Nelson Ekujuni, uh, are both political analysts from the Yoruba extraction in Nigeria. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. All right. Well, we'll take a short break now, and when we return, we speak about the National Assembly and what they are saying about Nigeria's national unity. We'll be right back.